for me. Um, Cause my motivation just comes and goes. Like <laughs> I wasn't motivated at all today, but I still got up and just did my fasting, you know, like, cause I just know what I'm supposed to do, you know? And again, if I have a coach and they are telling me, okay, this is the blueprint. I, I don't want the blame to be on me. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, okay, let me just, keep doing i did exactly what y'all said to do so it's not on me you know what i mean so and i see people all the time they cheat they do this or they and they point the blame but i'm you know again if you know you did everything it's better for your coach to be able to say okay now we got to rethink some things now i gotta blah 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 so it's it's a two-part you know um so it's not so much of the motivation for me it's that I'm motivated <laughs> is the discipline. And if I go on, um, the next time I go on stage, all of this is gonna count. You know, what I did in between time. So, um, and again, we're getting judged. So if you already got a critique, so the next time you get up there, you know you need to have improved, improved if not now, like, damn, she really worked on those, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So that's the part, I guess, that would be motivating, actually seeing the change, you know? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's part of the process as you grow. Discipline is the one biggest factor. You you know, stick into a regiment, stick into a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, consistency, that's the big part. It's not, you just can't say, you know what, I, I want to skip a leg day. But then you have to get up because, you know, even though you don't have that motivation, you still have that discipline that yeah, exactly. you to keep going forward. Like, the best way to say it, like, no matter how hard life hits you, it's how hard you take the hit to keep moving forward, like Rocky Balboa says. Exactly. So, yeah. So as you've been competing for so it's, it's, it's quite for a while, have you feel like that, especially if you look at the division, your division, mm -hmm. the changes, how it has evolved over the time? I mean, uh, if you look at it now, um, just saw that City Gillen has stepped away from the, has decided to retire after number eight. Did you watch the Olympia? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. What, yeah. What did you, did you enjoy? Who who were you rooting for if you were watching? You have any, a favorite? Uh, I don't know if I just had favorites. Um, Sydney is always a beauty. You know, she's just a beauty every time. So I think we're all anticipating what she's gonna do this year. You know, because she just is such. She's graceful. You know, so um, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't have any doubts that she wasn't gonna. It's, it's her show to lose. <laughs> but um, but I had several people that I know who were competing. Um, so just watching them do their thing, it's just amazing. Again, you have to be happy for those. All of those, whether you know them or not, they they earn that spot, right? So it's just that's the mode. Again, to piggyback on that question that you asked previously. That's the motivation. That's the stage you want to hit, you know. So, um, but all around in all the divisions, I was super impressed. Um, last year, you couldn't have paid me to watch the men's or 212. Like that was now I just love the art of bodybuilding. So now I'm like looking at all of the divisions, you know, um, even down to the wheelchair. So, but it was just fun. It was just fun to watch. It was good to see the winners that won, you know, even those who um regain their crown and th those who now there's the new so it's it was good just i don't know if i per se had any favorites but i definitely had girlfriends or associates that i know who were um on stage and of course i'm rooting for them well yeah. repeat personally i don't like watching banana hammocks and board shorts that's just me <laughs> so you know <laughs> but i'm not a big fan of bikini wellness i mostly like to i will watch I'm a big fan of women's bodybuilding. I like physique. Mm, yeah. Figure a little bit. I know I interviewed a couple of ladies who competed um, in women's physique at that show, and I was very, I was congratulations them. That was their, their debut. You know, yeah. I really, as I, as, as I met my crowd, I must have heard smell. I will pay attention where. But one woman I really am a fan of, and she is the queen herself. And that's Miss Andrea Shaw. I know Aww. she's a beautiful lady. I've never she, met her. I've seen her. A I mean. She's just amazed. I interviewed a young lady who yesterday who was at the Olympia got a pro card. Uh, oh. Dominic Geis, and she was there, and you know, and also a friend of mine last year. I always like to bring this out because this is where this is where I, I this is what why I enjoy doing what I do. 
where mm-hmm. people who I come friends with give me gifts and rewards. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine was at the last year's Olympia. She got me this issue. I had it upside down. <laughs> she got me this issue of muscle okay. development. It's the last, I think the last issue, the first issue we ever have a woman's body on the cover. And Andrea, she signed it for me. Oh, that was super sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I hug it. I love it to hug it. I call it George. I mean, my poor little funny rabbit. I need to put it in something because, you know, it's getting a little riff on the edge, but I don't know. I just like to bring it out one of my interviews because I really want to show people that this is why I do enjoy what I do because I get the awards from it. Yeah. And, but yeah, I can understand, you know, really admiring, um, you know, the competitors, the art of muscle, you know, how develop, how you build, how you grow as an athlete. And, you know, and it's, it's a process. Like with Sid, now she's stepping away. It looks like there's a good chance that Jessica, she just competed this weekend. She, I think she right. competed this weekend, just great with She just won a master's at the Hurricane Pro. She's doing open. You know, and I've she met might. Jessica a couple times. So, she's so sweet, like such a nice lady. Um, so yeah, I wish her the best as well. Yeah. I think she yeah. I think she was center the last time I saw some of the pictures this weekend. So yeah, yeah. So like I said, um, as you know, it's something again with figure, it's starting to evolve where it's getting to the point where some of the women, like I just saw this late one lady who just competed in Olympia who did a couple of physique shows before she made her Olympia debut. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think, the, I don't know if y'all did the same shows together. No, her name is Manone uh, DeLilly. And mm-hmm. she's she's going to be switching over to women's physique after this year. She's already done two shows. Do you feel as a competitor that you are at your best at this division or you feel like you are getting to the point that you might evolve and move up or just how do you feel? Where you want to go? Where are your coaches talking to you about? Okay, so just just so I'm clear, what, what's the question? The question hey. is like, would you ever like say this? Like, would you ever consider like say as as the figure divisions are evolving and some of the women are looking closer to like women's physique? Would you ever consider making that move yourself, or you think like you feel more comfortable where you are right now? Well, I'm again. I'll I'll go again. I just follow direction, you know. And my coach is one that. Whatever your body's doing, you know, um, sometimes people can, if my body, unfortunately, like I have the issue of holding size, you know, so my body naturally wants to just be small sometimes, you know, so it's like, girl, you're going to look flat and droop, you know, so you, we need full glutes, right? So as you get into prep and you or yeah, you're 12 weeks and get down to the last two, three weeks. Now we like, shit. We got to hold some size, you know what I'm saying? So now we try to eat. So I don't know if I'll ever get there to to women's physique, per se, but who knows? Um, but um, no, whatever whatever my body says, you know, if it grows and it wants to be women's physique, then, hey, I don't know if, if me personally see myself doing it because they do a whole routine, like my hat's off to them, you know, I'm like, I don't know if I could do that, but never say never, <laughs> but I don't see myself out there dancing and doing splits. I've never done a split <laughs> in my damn life. <laughs> you don't have to dance to split. You just do a little pose and like, you know, something nice. I know. I think I that's know. the whole art to that stuff, you know. I think one thing I think some women who transition because one thing they want to give with those clear heels. I mean, that's, yeah, I that's like the thing. heels. I'm, well, I'm a heel girl. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned your coach. Uh, what's his name? And how long y'all been working together? Um, it's Ford Steel. He's um, we've been together now since twenty, yeah, twenty twenty one. So June, end of June. So, yeah, and yeah. so three years. So That's technically, cool. like I would say, I mean, I've only had two coaches. First one I had, I kept for a year, and then him. That's all I know. Yeah. That's, That's good. That's good. You have a good relationship with your coach, and you know mm-hmm. he understands you and your and your body, how you grow and develop. You know, yeah. some ladies they find a coach that may not, you know, especially for women. Yeah. Some I think I hear sometimes some women say they feel more comfortable if they had. A, a woman as a coach because you know understanding the biology and the physiology and all stuff mm-hmm. of a woman. You know, but if you find a coach that, you know, he can understand who you are as a competitor, how you grow, how you develop the process of uh, how you train, that's mm-hmm. relationship. So like when you're training, especially, what is that exercise that you 
like the most is say, I love it. I just love it. And I want to say, damn, I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> oh. If, look, if you working hard enough, you ain't gonna like none of this shit. I mean, I had to switch it. So, um, what I just—it used to be when I first started, I used to love doing leg days until I came over to Four Steel, and I'm like, I fucking hate leg days, you know, because yeah. the intensity just his his leg days are just not for the week, okay? So, um, so and then it became okay back you know because i did more back than anything i think the whatever you do the most you know so again before my critiques i needed to build my back so we had more back days you know so again you just get comfortable with what you do consistently right so now it's glutes and i'm like oh my god but i know eventually the more and more i'm doing these glutes on their own days it's gonna get easier because Hey, y'all gonna look at him and be like, damn, did she go to wellness? Because I'm finna work on these glutes, you know? <laughs> but, um, so, I don't know. Um, right now, like, to me, back is easy, you know? Um, and glutes are now, it's not like, I hate this, but you gotta feel the burn. You gotta go through it. It's a muscle you gotta grow, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I did glutes last night, so. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's a process about consistency. And, you know, I know most bodybuilders, I had a few ladies say they love leg day. I call them mutants. You're, if you, every time you say you love leg day, you're a mutant. No one loves leg day. It's like, <laughs> Let me get my charger. I uh, yeah, uh, but no, but no, you have, I used to love leg day. Like, it wasn't no problem for me, but mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the episode of, uh, my favorite episode of the Chappelle show, where Charlie Murphy meets Rick James. And they all go back to you remember the episode when they go back to Eddie's house and Rick is like, F your couch, Eddie Murphy, F your couch. And Charlie and Eddie beating his legs. <laughs> He's just like, you darkness, black, <laughs> you know, and that's and, and, and Dave just crawling out and saying, What about my legs, Eddie Murphy? What about my legs, Charlie Murphy? That's a back leg day for a bodybuilder. But yeah, especially for you in figure, you have to have those round cap shoulders. You want that wide back, you want that natural V taper. Because, right. you know, I'm, I'm really learning a lot, especially like, you know, I've interviewed most of my good interviews, most of them women, bodybuilding physique. I've yeah. interviewed women figure. I've even interviewed women in bikini. I just had a lady, I have interviewed ladies who compete in wellness as amateurs, but I had my first official, was it about a week or so ago, wellness competitor on here. It's, you know, she was a physique competitor. You know? oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so like, after the uh, Europa, I know one thing as a competitor, you know, you're, you're on a diet, you know, you're, you're, you're prepping, you know, you can't eat anything you want, but then you get the opportunity to enjoy yourself. You're over there in, in Great Britain, you had some flakes and beans, these bangers and mash, what you, what did you, what was that thing you ate, uh, you know, madam, what was that thing you wanted the most after your last show? Um, this time, to be honest, was the first time, like, since competing that I just really allowed myself to enjoy food and relax and, you know, just, like, take a week off. I'm like, what? So, um, I had a little bit of every... I'm a pescatarian, by the way, so I don't really... I don't do anything but fish, <laughs> and I've been like that now for, like, 10 plus years. Like, when I started doing this, I was borderline already like a vegan vegetarian so i implemented fish again um so i've never just been like a big eater but i like me some cheese pizza and um so i think i did i had pizza i had my beyond burgers and over there in europe it wasn't um i think i my biggest cheat was doing like their French toast or waffles or something that they made for um, breakfast, but no, um, I had my cheesecake. It got bit when I was in the states. You know, I was like, okay, I wish I need to start making a list of all this stuff that I want when I'm in prep, because I always tend to forget it, and it's not until I come back in prep and I'm like, damn, I should have did this, 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 or oh, I forgot. <laughs> so, um, but no, I really enjoyed. I'm back on my regular scheduled program now for um improvement season diet but oh i enjoyed myself i had cheesecake some drinks 
Yeah, I party. I was outside for at least two or three weeks. <laughs> yeah, got one more sip. This is kind of like he one more I sip. Know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and enjoy now I don't have any cravings. Like I just, I don't even have any desire for it, really. Well, that's the thing is, food is part of the process, especially for a bodybuilder. It's the yeah. thing that sometimes I say like this, it can make you either, it can make you stranger or make you stronger, you know, you know, it's just the taste of it, you know, and just the feel of it when you eat something very, you know, delectable, you know, and just, you know, I just, I can't help myself. I'm just, uh, just uh, I'm just a dog chasing cars, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And that's the thing that PDM said that you just can't eat everything. You have to stick yeah. to a diet. You have to be regimental. What's you like your, especially when you do your day, what's your meal prep like? What's, or well, like we get ready for, uh, you know, you know, especially when you work it out in training? I think it's the same like everybody else, um, except I don't have the, the steak or the chicken or it's fish. Fish, fish, fish. <laughs> um, the morning, um, egg whites, spinach. And then my other meals is just spinach, rice, and fish. <laughs> it doesn't change. Not, it's, it's like this for a whole year. I eat the same thing. Even when I go out to eat, my friend's like, you're going to turn into a salmon. Because it's <laughs> always just salmon, spinach, and whatever the carb is. Um but again, uh, that's just how I choose to eat. Um, that's my options. Unless I don't eat, and I still need the protein. So I'm like, I know I need the, the fish. But sometimes I can go without eating the meat, actually, at all, and just do straight veggies. But that's not going to help me grow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Protein is a very important part about growing as a bodybuilder. I know I've interviewed a couple of ladies who are, you know, vegan competitors. Yeah, to, you know, and it's hard to find that alternative to right. you know protein. There's like soy, and uh, also there's tofu. But then, mm -hmm. if you are a division where you need to be larger, you right. need that size, especially yeah. you know for conditioning, and mm -hmm. you know you need to eat you know a certain a protein. If it's fish, it's, that's good. If it's beef, if it's chicken, if yeah. it's you know turkey, you know. But you know, it's just about how you grow as an athlete. Exactly. So now you say you're in the process, it's rest of the season. So is there a plan to compete next year or you feel like you just need more time? No, we will definitely come out next year, but we always pick our shows on how my body's growing, you know. So last, um, the first show this season was Atlanta Pro. And he told me literally at the 12 week mark, he might have told me Saturday, okay, you're doing Atlanta Pro tomorrow, May 12th. 12 weeks, you know, and I'm like, okay, so let me switch my head around to now we in prep. So it's basically prep. I'm like, you sure? He's like, I'm absolutely sure. I'm like, okay. I don't go back and forth. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So again, it's just how my body, you know, um, if, if he sits me out, then I'm fine with that, you know, because again, that's, he knows what's best. You know? mm -hmm. That's good that you trust your tros. He coach you, you have faith in him and his yeah. plan for you. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, because my oldest niece, she lives in Atlanta. And I'm thinking about going to that show next year, you know, uh That's staying so with her. Good. Yeah, uh, it's a Linda Murray show. And you know, right. Linda Murray is the woman that really she's been stepping up. I went to Savannah. I actually remember I was sitting in the VIP section. She's up there with the judges and with, you know, with a, uh, and, and she turned around, and she smiled at me. I was taking pictures and I smiled back. I wish I could talk to her, but I know she's a she's busy lady. She's such a nice lady. And she is just as friendly as she can be. Her, Lee Haney, all of them are just super, super nice. They give back to the sport um, as much as they can. From what I have seen, you know, they yeah. are very, very approachable. And so why not do their show? Um, yeah. And again, yeah. that's home. Yeah, yeah, because you know that's the eight crowd: Lee Haney, uh, uh -huh. you know Linda, Ronnie. Uh, uh -huh. Now, now you have uh, you know um, you know Sid, and there's also Alina, you know Garcia. That's the eight crowd. Uh -huh. Then you have number ten at the top. That's Iris Kyle. And I mean, people can say like, "Oh, she won ten Miss Olympias," but still ten Olympia titles. I know. How many have you won? So I know. We have yeah. here. My man KL, the one Rashad here, the KL coming through, he says, Hey, what's going on? Not much, brother. I'm talking to the lovely uh, Miss Tracy, Lebe Tracy 
um, Miller, aka Madame Laveau. So you mm -hmm. kind of need the two names, but you know. Yeah, because it's yeah. still my middle name. Laveau is my middle name. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of, what's that, what's the origins of that name? Where'd it come from? Well, my dad just came, I used to ask him, why you name me? And he could never really come. So I always said, oh, it's love. <laughs> um, but I learned about Madame Laveau or Marie Laveau out of New Orleans. And she was a, um, they call her the voodoo queen or whatever, but, and not in the essence of voodoo being bad, because that's again, I don't want to go historic on this, but voodoo is, an, it was turned mm -hmm. around to be made like it was evil. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, just learning her name and stuff. I'm like, yes, Madame Laveau, like, <laughs> like she did good for her people. You know what I mean? So I think it's French. I'll say French. Um, Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Especially, especially that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially in New Orleans and New, uh, uh, Louisiana. Yeah. They have a, you know, strong French history, French, Spanish has come as you know, uh, voodoo is a, a more of a religious, like Wicca, you know, it's mm -hmm. natural, you know, but people in this country of Christians and, and whatever they call themselves, they like to, they like to change it out, but that's how most people. But back in the day, that. it coincided, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It was just you still healing and all of that stuff came from that. So yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. <laughs> well, you know, some people take things and twist them. Just because yeah. they have their beliefs, are, yeah. especially you got how they come out this Halloween, and that's yeah. was separated for years. But it's not about celebrating the devil; it's all about the life and you know energies of nature, you know. But yeah. you know, little kids just around wearing suits like that. I know I'm Brando Candy in the house. So I'm, hey, my my light is off. My door is shut. Don't come to my house. So stay home. <laughs> so you know, it, you know, I would say you know, you ladies, you work hard. And you deserve a lot of recognition. That's why I do this channel. You oh, know, you. for, you know, no, like one of my favorite quotes from a movie, the um, dark um, Batman begins where Jim Gordon says to Batman, I never get a chance to thank you. And he turned around and says, you never have to. That's why I do this. Cause give y'all your voice. People don't understand for you ladies. It's a cost. There's a, there's, there's more expense to be a competitor compared to the men who just got wear banana hammers and board shorts. Y'all ladies have to, Yo, know, your suits, that's right. That suit you wear at both at the Atlanta and at the um Europa, that was a beautiful suit. Uh, you know, Thank you. who designed it? Oh, I had two, uh, Miss Kathy out of Atlanta. She's just a little lady that enjoys um 